So for the next two weeks, we're going to be working um, with some of the um, ideas um, and approaches of a Swedish artist called Anders Zorn. Zorn was a contemporary of John Singer Sargent's. They were friends, rivals, actually. So there were occasions where they were both painting the same um, society portrait subjects and, and did that competitively. Uh, and they are similar, um, actually, in their approaches, painting in oil, paint, painting wet in wet. But what we're going to look at this week and next week is something that's particular to Zorn, and that is a particular limited palette. So that's one of his paintings of his wife, Emma, and I've just been having a go to transcription in oil paint and in pastel, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you um, and suggest that this week, having done some colour mixing, which I'll go through now, uh, I'm going to suggest that you uh, try a transcription of one of his paintings. Uh, I'm also going to cover a little bit on pastel because it is possible to work um, with these approaches uh, in pastel as well. So I'll, I'll do a little bit on pastel along the way if you'd like to try to work in pastel. And I'll, actually you could also work in watercolour. <clears throat> but I'm going to work in oil. So a little bit of colour mixing first. So a highly limited palette because Zorn worked with ivory black, yellow ochre, cadmium red, or he would have used vermilion, and he used flake white, I think it was, but we've got titanium white. So you'll um, notice then <clears throat> there's no blue, uh, and that's quite interesting. Um, so the features of the Zorn palette, it's some of the things that we've talked about already. Um, it's a limited palette. There are few colours involved. Uh, and so you tend to get a much more harmonious effect. The lack of blue uh, means that certain colours aren't very strong, aren't very saturated. It's said that this is the palette that Zorn tended to use indoors. Uh, he did do... Um, quite a lot of painting outdoors or of outdoor subjects when he would have used more colours than these. Um, but it, a, 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 a drawback, if you like, is that certain colours are missing. So if you want a, a strong blue, that's not going to be possible. But the upside of this is that because the colours are in such a narrow range, they're much more unified, much more harmonious, and they're particularly good for painting skin, flesh. So one of the reasons why the, um, uh, it's possible to work without a blue is if we just look here, uh, if I take some ivory black, uh, I just wanted to do a bit of a range and add some uh, titanium white to it. I don't know how well this will actually come out for you, but um, ivory black is, is a bluish black. So um, some of the blues... Uh, or greens that Zorn created or that you will create with your Zorn palette will be a result of using the black. So I'm just showing you there what happens when we add white to black. If we then make a mixture of black and cadmium red. And actually, what do I want to do? I want to do uh, a black red. So I want to have a bit more black than red. And you can see that that's giving me a red brown. And again, if I mix that, make some grades, with the white, you'll see better. Well, you'll see a range of, of red-browns, um, but also you'll see actually the amount of color. That's looking like a, well, it's a gray 
a red grey, isn't it? It's quite a cool pink. And then from the point of view, I think particularly uh, interesting from the point of view of painting skin tones, if we do a black-yellow mix, yellow ochre, and if I then make some tints out of that, with the white, you can see that we get these good yellow greys, but I have liked a bit more yellow in there. I think you can see the, the hint of yellow in that, and then see what sort of a Do we get there? So I'm just giving you, um, I'm letting you see how these colours mix. I'm going to put them together onto a kind of chart, and that's what I'm going to recommend you do first. Um, that you have a, a chart with certain steps of the particular mixtures, and I'll be a bit more clear about that in a moment. Um, I just wanted to then show you uh, a yellow a yellow red so I think I, you can try this in different ways but I think one good idea is to have one to three so one of yet no uh, three of yellow and one of red because we, of course we're going to do a red yellow as well I'm wondering a little bit because I know that yellow ochre is a fairly weak pigment and cadmium red is a very powerful one. So it may be that that three to one isn't the best proportion depending on which you want to stand out more. Anyway, you can see there the kind of pale orange that we get. Yes, now that I think of that, you see that's still, I think that's got too much red in it. But never mind, let's try what happens if we have three to one of three red to one yellow. I think I actually need to make a new version of that uh, yellow red because I think what we need for Zorn's skin palette is a yellower um, mixture. So, yeah, you can see that. That's not so different from cadmium red. Whoops. Uh, so, there you go. That was just wanting to see which one of you would be the first to spot that mistake. So, what should we do? Let's just get a bit more yellow into this. So I mentioned three to one, but I don't think that's really going to make sense with a when you put strong cadmium red together with relatively weak alizarin, no, weak ochre. So that's a bit better. Um, and I think I'd even get a bit more yellow in this red one. I'll tell you what, I'll do one more thing and then I'll pause it and do the chart. Um, but if we just do pure cadmium red, to see what you get.
Oh, that is a bit redder, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, I'm going to pause now because I want to put together a chart and try and make this uh, a little bit more systematic <clears throat> so that I can guide you in what you might do first with this project and that is just mix these colours and demonstrate to yourself the range that you can get from this starting point. So I'm suggesting for the first part of this exercise you make yourselves a chart um, in which you'll have black, red, yellow, black, red, black, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, red, black, red, yellow, black, yellow, red. Now this isn't um, this isn't comprehensive. There you'll you'll see that there are other strengths of mixture or, or, or other mixtures that you'll be able to make. Um, using these colours or you can adjust the mixtures in particular ways this yeah so this this isn't comprehensive but it is uh, I think a good way of you just getting a feel for the range of colour that's possible starting with these four initial pigments and what I'm demonstrating is as I say, not that scientific, because I don't want you to get too hung up on this. I want you to just enjoy um, the range of possibilities. So stop talking and do something now. So here's black. So I'll put black in that square. And then with my other mixtures, I added white. So that gave me that grey and that grey. And I could get even lighter. Um, when I did red... That was over here, that was a red, a certain amount of white, maybe a darker red. So if you're going to aim for anything in this chart, it would be to, to sensitively judge these steps. Because actually you can use this uh, when you start painting as a guide. Uh, then yellow, I didn't do a yellow, uh, not yet, but I did do a black red. So black and red gives me that. And then when I added a bit of white. So these are, these are all tints of um, the particular mixture that's listed at the top. And some of those maybe should have been a bit lighter. So I'm doing it roughly to encourage you to feel confident about how you approach it. Black, yellow. So I actually adjusted it from what you'd seen at the beginning of the video. I've got a bit more yellow. Because what I've come to the conclusion uh, ab about these this combination of colours is knowing that lemon yellow is not a strong pigment it's probably good to have a bit more of it than you might have um, in a three to one ratio so uh, and then red yellow so that was here that was my red yellow so it's an orange but it's an orange where uh, I've got a bit more proportionally of the red and that's the kind of colour for cheeks that'll give me and then yellow red where I had a bit more of the yellow that's giving me some nice again you can imagine these as uh, useful skin tones so uh, I shouldn't spend too long um, I'm going to pause this because I'd like you to see the difference between black, red, yellow and black, yellow, red. So I filled in the yellow ochre with the white additions and then here I made the black with more red 
proportionally in yellow. And then as it gets tinted, that's what it becomes. These rather lovely greys. And that's its, its lightest tint. And then proportionally, so black, yellow and red. Again, some really nice earth colours really, some greenish, some very warm green tints. Okay, so there's the chart. I think that's worth starting with because it will give you a good experience of mixing colours and seeing what's possible. I'm now going to set up to start a transcription and um, encourage you to do something similar. So I'm going to do a little bit of a transcription of the portrait of uh, Ander Zorn's wife, Emma. Uh, I've tinted my canvas with what's probably the yellow, black yellow, um, spread out um, and rubbed in with a rag. Now, another thing worth um, talking about really is the fact that Zorn, like Sargent, um, painted wet in wet. So I've prepared some of these colors. For example, um, the brown red, ah, the black red. And that's what I'm gonna start with. So I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna do her head. Uh, and so there you can see my red, black, or my black red. Uh, So I've gone for the dark shape of her hair. And then I'm going to, probably next what I would do is some of these uh, red yellows, really, uh, that sort of area there. That's the kind of color that I would put here on her cheek, her ear, and maybe some of that in the nose and the eye. So, as I say, Sargent and Zorn painted wet in wet, so they would be quite relaxed about getting these colours onto the canvas, covering areas, probably blocking in bigger areas, before then um, starting to break up those big areas into smaller shapes. Now, of course, I should have had my colours already. You would have your colours ready, especially if you were demonstrating. Because I'm thinking what I'll do next is actually go for the colours on the wall. to the front of this face, negative shape. So I can define some of that with what's behind it. And you can see the, the lighter bits of canvas already are quite helpful for hair, for, for, for the lighter parts of the face. And then I shall make, for the front of the face, I mean, you're probably not seeing this so well on the camera, but I think my paler and even paler versions of red, yellow and yellow, red are where I need to go next. I mentioned that at the beginning. Some of these are, um, you know, you immediately see their potential for, for skin colours. And as I've been describing, yellow ochre Sometimes you need more yellow ochre if you really want the yellow quality to shine through because yellow ochre is not at all as powerful as cadmium red. I'm starting off with a fairly big brush because I think that's the way to work with this technique. Try and see the big shapes and block them in loosely. And 
with your brush. If the paint is no longer clean, then you've got to clean that brush. And then maybe for the lighter colour, which I think is a bit more of a red yellow, I've got a slightly smaller brush and there are lights particular places on the front of the nose, on the cheek here. Bit on the chin. So that's beginning to emerge uh, as the lighter, it's the pattern of light. But what I would do next, get a touch of that maybe onto the eye. But then I think I would go back to the darks because I think I've neglected them a little bit. And I would actually just use, as I've been using, the black red uh, to find an eyebrow and an eyelash, a bit of a nostril. I need a, I need a, its own colour the top lip but I'll just get that in there now for now and then let me show you the effect of some other colors as well so I'll pause just because I need to make a color for her top so her top is very much um, along the lines of some of these grays um, that you'll get from the red red yellow the black, red, yellow, uh, and of course she's got a newspaper, which is um, a much paler, probably a pale, pale yellow. Good to get some of that in to show these contrasts, and then to go back into areas of the face and really warm up. And this is where you can start to see just how, how in a way, the, this is very much a saturated red palette. It's difficult to get saturated blues. Well, you can't get saturated blues because he didn't uh, start, the, the, he hasn't started with any blue. But these warm colors from the face, from flesh and so on can really be strengthened and actually even in the hair there's quite a lot of reds and if you look at if you do look up you will I'm sure look up and his own paintings there's very often quite a few of his models have red hair or else uh, there's a particular model who often has um, a red headband so you know it's 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 a palette particularly for um, these saturated reds or if you want to you know push red but the green um, the contrast in green for example what I'm trying to do now uh, is possible through the ochre and the black and by bringing out some of those green contrasts I mean I've not done poor old Emma much of a, a service here but by bringing out the greens, uh, you then create the complementary effect of the uh, yeah the red against the red against green. Right. So I think I should pause again because the other thing I wanted to demonstrate was the effect of the the way in which you could uh, attempt these uh, in pastel. So let me just get a couple of lines in there. There we go. So, pause again. So with pasta, we're working with the same principle, the black, the red, the ochre, yellow ochre, and the white. What's trickier with pastel is mixing. And you often have to go back and forth between colors in order to really get them to mix. Depends on the quality of your pastels. But um, here's my red black, and I go back and forth over the, the mixtures 
back and forth between the two. Um, I don't know that my yellow ochre is that good. Let's see. But depending on the quality of your pastels, if you've got very soft pastels, you won't necessarily have to work them quite so much as this. But then they can be mixed with the white. And as I say, it's probably worth, for example, to get that to be the mixture of um, to get to get the strength of the yellow or in the case here with the red black you sometimes have to go back over again top up the red to get the um, the version that you need and the two together giving me that muted orange So I'll just have a quick start on the transcription. Um, I've used the black pastel rather than charcoal. I often encourage people to mix pastel colours with charcoal. But I think in this instance it's probably quite good to work with the black. And, well, you'll have to get a feel for how much you smudge how much you mix. I think depending on the quality of your pastels, this will be a more or less satisfying um, experience. But I think worth trying actually, because I think it, you learn a lot from, you learn a lot about color from this sort of process of mixing. If you've got gloves on, they sometimes get in the way. And I think actually it's just wonderful to throw down bright red. You know, if you've got certain uh, deliberations about skin colors in particular, I think to be able to sort of throw red down the way you have to with the Zorn palette, uh, is just quite a liberating thing really. So I'm mixing my red and yellow a bit on the drawing. Some of that now needs to be lighter. So this is, you know, very much wet in wet, if you like but using pastels and first you've got to load a lot on and then you've got to go back a little bit more gently and mix the colors to get the the particular mixture the particular proportion you're after so that's all gone a bit redder but then I'm going to come back with the white and mix that again. White pastels actually are sometimes quite good for acting as a mixer. So that's not that's not too bad actually. I mean this is I've some of you I will have in the past shown three color drawing which is working with black, white and a reddy brown. Well this is quite like three color drawing, but I suppose it's four color drawing. So you get the black and white and you get the warm red, but you also get the slightly more colorful, cool, uh, cool yellow. So there's scope for that. Uh, as I say, working with the pastel mixture to um, create these uh, the, the Zorn palette. A bit tiny bit of red into those maybe. There's a newspaper. Okay, so um, what I have uh, started you off with then is an introduction to Anders Zorn's palette, working with. Uh, 
ochre, cadmium red, and black and white. I'm suggesting that you start by doing um, a chart where you lay out um, the different versions uh, of these colours. I'll maybe list them in the email because it did get a bit confusing. Um, black, red, yellow, black, yellow, red. I made a point about the strength of cadmium red compared with the relative feebleness of yellow ochre. So you get a bit of a feel for that as well. But it's a really good thing to try because even if you don't um, want to continue to work with this limited palette, it gives you a terrific sense of how by working with quite closely related colours, you can produce something that's very colourful and you can really see the effect of one colour on the other. You know, when I put in the background a yellowy green um, of the, the setting, the warm colours in that head stood out instantly. So it's um, a really valuable thing to experience in terms of colour. So this week then, try and set out a chart of mixtures to get a feel for mixing the colours. And then I recommend you look through some images by Zorn and choose one to do a transcription of. Maybe particularly a sort of head and shoulders or um, some, one of his interior uh, paintings that's more than likely done with this limited number of colours. And I can recommend ones to you or send them to you uh, if you're struggling to know where to start. And then next week we'll carry on with this, but perhaps you could choose a subject of your own um, which could be done from life or a photograph but again we'll be uh, using uh, the Zorn palette. Okay, so see you tomorrow.